bombshell indictment. President Trump's former campaign chairman, Paul Manafort, under house arrest tonight. The 12 count indictment among the charges conspiracy against the U.S. money laundering. His associate considered his right hand man indicted too. the president tweeting no collusion. But then what could be an even bigger bombshell? A third man, a former Trump campaign advisor, pleading guilty, acknowledging meetings to get dirt from the Russians. And he's been cooperating with the FBI for weeks. The other news this Monday night, the powerful storm hitting the east, the home swept away by floodwaters. The allegations and new fallout tonight involving actor Kevin Spacey. And Made in America is back tonight, the World Series edition. This is ABC World News Tonight with David Muir. Good evening and a very busy Monday night, and we begin tonight with the first indictments from the special counsel Robert Mueller in his investigation into possible collusion between the Trump campaign and Russia. Two former members of the Trump campaign under house arrest at this hour. Former Trump campaign chairman Paul Manafort today pleading not guilty after that 12 count indictment. Manafort helped orchestrate Donald Trump's convention. And his associate and former campaign aide Rick Gates also indicted, also pleading not guilty today. And tonight, a third man, an advisor to the campaign, this time, though, pleading guilty and now cooperating with the FBI. ABC senior justice correspondent Pierre Thomas tonight leading us off. On a blustery morning in Washington, former Trump campaign chairman Paul Manafort today surrendering to authorities at an FBI field office. Around the same time, his key associate Rick Gates surrendering too. Gates was one time deputy campaign manager for Donald Trump. Here you see them together on stage at the Republican National Convention. Exactly Both men now charged in a sweeping 12 count indictment with conspiracy against the United States, money laundering, and failing to register as agents for a foreign government. The FBI claims that they had been working for Ukrainian officials with ties to Russia, and that from approximately 2006 through at least 2016, they hid more than $75 million from their overseas work in a number of foreign bank accounts, failing to pay taxes. According to the indictment, Manafort used the money to, quote, enjoy a lavish lifestyle, spending nearly a million dollars on antique rugs and more than $1.3 million on fancy clothes, not to mention expensive cars and luxury properties. Gates allegedly used some of the money for his kids' tuition. Today, both men pleading not guilty. Manafort's lawyer that, defiant. He was seeking to further democracy and to help the Ukraine come closer to the United States and the EU. Manafort has been in Bob Mueller's crosshairs for months. In July, the FBI raided his Virginia home, armed with agents bursting into his bedroom after secretly sneaking in. Trump reacting at the time. Uh, you know, they do that uh, very seldom. So I was surprised to see it. It was pretty tough stuff. To wake him up, perhaps his family was there. I think that's pretty tough stuff. In his five months working on the Trump campaign, Manafort orchestrated the convention and denied he or Donald Trump had any ties to the Russians. Are there any ties between Mr. Trump, you or your campaign, and Putin and his regime? No, there are not. It's absurd. Uh, and, you know, there's no basis to it. Today's indictment does not allege Manafort colluded with Russia on behalf of the Trump campaign. But hours later, a perhaps even bigger bombshell, pointing directly to the question of collusion. Mueller's team announcing a guilty plea from a former Trump campaign advisor named George Papadopoulos. Papadopoulos acknowledges he spoke with a professor with close ties to the Russian government. According to court documents, Papadopoulos says the professor had told him about the Russians possessing dirt on then-candidate Hillary Clinton in the form of thousands of emails. He admits he initially lied to the FBI and misrepresented those conversations. Papadopoulos was part of the campaign's foreign policy team, Trump praising him at the time in an interview with the Washington Post. Papadopoulos, he's an oil and energy consultant, excellent guy. You can see them all at this national security meeting. Papadopoulos here just a few seats away from Donald Trump. He told the investigators at that very meeting, March 31st, 2016, he informed the group he had connections that could help arrange a meeting between then-candidate Trump and President Putin. The Trump-Putin meeting never happened, but in his plea, Papadopoulos makes one thing clear. Several members of Team Trump knew he was talking with the Russians about helping the campaign. He says at one point he was told by a campaign official, great work. 
And Pierre Thomas with us live tonight from Washington. And Pierre, what do Paul Manafort and Rick Gates face if they're convicted? David, they could face up to 20 years in prison. Manafort was, re was released on a $10 million unsecured bond and was placed under house arrest. He's expected back in court on Thursday, David. Pierre Thomas leading us off on this Monday night. Pierre, thank you. Shortly after the indictment of Paul Manafort and his associate, President Trump tweeting, there is no collusion. But that was before news of a third man, another Trump advisor, and this time an arrest months ago, an indictment, and a guilty plea kept secret. And now comes word he's been cooperating with the FBI for weeks. Here's ABC's chief investigative correspondent, Brian Ross, tonight. It is the biggest break in the case yet. The strongest evidence yet of possible collusion with details of how this Trump campaign advisor, 30 year old George Papadopoulos, worked with suspected Russian agents and then denied it to the FBI, as he did when he talked with ABC News earlier this year. The special counsel revealed today that Papadopoulos pleaded guilty to charges of lying to the FBI on October 5th and has been secretly cooperating. It's very significant to have a, an official. Uh, with any major presidential campaign admitting that they're working with the Russian government to hurt their opponent and admitting that they lied about that fact to cover it up. Papadopoulos joined the Trump campaign's national security team in March of 2016. George Papadopoulos. With Donald Trump's now well-known words of praise. Excellent guy. But three days later, Papadopoulos was in London meeting with his Russian connections including a woman he thought was Vladimir Putin's niece, but turns out was not. According to the FBI, the Russians told Papadopoulos on April 26th they had dirt on Hillary Clinton and thousands of emails long before they were made public. The day after that pivotal meeting, Donald Trump gave his first foreign policy speech with an emphasis on Russia. I believe an easing of tensions and improved relations with Russia from a position of strength only is possible, absolutely possible. According to today's court filing, Papadopoulos, as an unpaid advisor, reported to four separate senior campaign managers or policy advisors trying to set up a meeting between Trump and Putin. One told him, great job, and another wrote an email, I would encourage you. Yet the president has repeatedly denied his campaign had any connection with anyone in Russia including this exchange with ABC's Cecilia Vega. Did you or anyone in your campaign have any contact with Russia leading up to or during the campaign? Well, Nothing at all. None at all. And Brian Ross with us now. And Brian, we heard you report there that Papadopoulos reported to four different uh, senior campaign managers about his contacts with the Russians. And according to the indictment that we all got our hands on today, one campaign supervisor added great work when he learned of those conversations. Exactly. Do we have any idea who these four senior advisors were? Well, David, they're not named in the court filings, but if they lied about the Russian context, they too, like Papadopoulos, will face criminal charges. And about this development that he's now been cooperating these last several weeks with the FBI, what does cooperating mean? Would we see a wiretap or other techniques they usually use? Well, it's standard practice, David, for the FBI, whenever they get someone like this, an alleged conspiracy to secretly cooperate, to have them engage others and even wear a secret recording device, a wire. We don't know if that happened here, but it would hardly be unusual, David. All right, Brian Ross and your team, our thanks to you. In the meantime, this is the day the White House has been bracing for. President Trump today trying to shift the focus of the probe onto Hillary Clinton and the Democrats. At the same time, the White House attempting to downplay the roles of these men in the Trump campaign. Here's ABC's chief White House correspondent, Jonathan Carl. The White House was blindsided by today's news. Sources tell ABC News the president had no advance notice from the special counsel. The first reaction from the president himself with his tweet dismissing the indictment of the man who ran his campaign. Sorry, but this is years ago, before Paul Manafort was part of the Trump campaign. But why aren't crooked Hillary and the Dems the focus? Also, there is no collusion. And in fact, there is nothing about collusion or the campaign in the Manafort indictment. What the president didn't know is there was another shoe to drop. Special counsel Mueller later revealing his plea deal with George Papadopoulos, the campaign foreign policy advisor who, in fact, was talking with Russians about getting dirt on Hillary Clinton. We've been saying from day one there's been no evidence of Trump-Russia collusion, and nothing in the indictment today changes that at all. But the George Papadopoulos agreement is about the campaign. Uh, 
it, it is specifically about the campaign. It has nothing to do with the activities of the campaign. It has to do with his failure to tell the truth. Sanders said Papadopoulos had an extremely limited role in the campaign. But again, there he is, just three seats from Donald Trump. Look, uh, this individual was the member of a volunteer advisory council that met one time over the course of a year. He was not paid by the campaign. It's not the first time the White House has sought to downplay the role of someone on the campaign. This is what they said about Paul Manafort, who spent five months on Team Trump, including three as campaign chairman. Obviously, there's been this discussion of, of Paul Manafort, who played a very limited role for a very limited amount of time. But beyond... He was, he but was the you, chairman of the hey, campaign. John, Jonathan, hold on. Can, you, can you stop interrupting other But Paul Manafort didn't play a limited role. Okay. Somebody's asking a question. Okay. It's not your press briefing. As the White House downplays Mueller's indictments, the president himself is making the case that the real subject of the Russia investigation should be Hillary Clinton. The president tweeting Sunday, there is so much guilt by Democrats, Clinton, and now the facts are pouring out. Do something. And what will the president do if Mueller continues to focus on his associates and not Clinton's? Is he going to rule out once and for all firing... Robert Mueller. The president uh, said last week, I believe it was last week, and I've said several times before, there's no intention or plan uh, to make any changes in regards to special counsel. No intention or plan to fire Robert Mueller. Careful words there. John Carl with us live from the White House, because John, you also asked something else. White House Press Secretary Sarah Sanders was asked whether President Trump would consider pardoning Paul Manafort at some point. How did she answer? She was asked specifically whether or not she would consider pardon, whether the president would consider pardoning Manafort or Gates, and her answer was interesting, David. She said, quote, I think we should let the process play through before we start looking at those steps. In other words, the White House is not ruling out pardoning either Manafort or Gates. All right, stay tuned on that front. John Carl, our thanks to you. Two more important questions on this tonight. Let's get right to our ABC News legal analyst, Dan Abrams. The White House saying today that this is going to end soon, the investigation. So the question for you, will it end soon, or is this just the first shoe to drop? Yeah, I don't think there's any way to look at that plea agreement with Papadopoulos and conclude that this is going to end anytime soon. The reason that they made that deal, when you read through the statement of facts and you read through the agreement, it is clear they cut that deal so they could investigate others, so this could be part of a broader investigation. They even say in one of the indictments that there's going to be more questioning of people connected to what they discovered in the indictment. And I want to ask you about Robert Mueller's strategy. There's been so much talk about this, whether or not he would go for the little fish first and try to get them to flip, or does he go for big names first? Well, it's clear he's going for the little fish first. Papadopoulos is a great example of that. Very small fish, but someone with potentially relevant information. The question's going to be, do you also view Manafort and Gates that way? Are, you, are they trying to put pressure on them to turn in an effort to get information on hire and others in the campaign. All right, Dan Abrams, every step of the way with us here. Dan, thank you. And there was more fallout tonight from the special counsel investigation. Powerful Democratic lobbyist Tony Podesta today stepping down from his own lobbying firm, the Podesta Group. Robert Mueller investigating whether Podesta fully disclosed his work for a Ukrainian group also tied to Paul Manafort. He says he's cooperating with Mueller's team. His brother, John Podesta, served as Hillary Clinton's campaign manager. Also breaking tonight, major storm damage across the Northeast. Millions reeling from heavy rains and hurricane-strength winds. Flood water sweeping a home down the river right there in Warren, New Hampshire. At its peak, more than one million customers in seven states without electricity. That system has now moved off the coast tonight. Glad about that. There is still much more ahead on World News tonight this Monday. The allegations against Kevin Spacey, an actor accusing him of a sexual advance when he was just a teenager. Tonight, Kevin Spacey's response, and that response is now igniting a firestorm. Also, the headline just in late today, a former NFL player dead at the age of 30. And our Made in America series is back tonight, just in time for the World Series. We swing for the fences, and we'll let you know how that turned out as we continue here. Stay tuned. If you're 65 or older, you may be at increased risk for pneumococcal pneumonia that can take you out of the game for weeks, even if you're healthy. Pneumococcal pneumonia is a potentially serious bacterial lung disease that in severe cases can lead to hospitalization. It may hit quickly, without warning, causing you to miss out on the things you enjoy most.
Prevnar 13 is not a treatment for pneumococcal pneumonia. It's a vaccine you can get to help protect against it. Prevnar 13 is approved for adults to help prevent infections from 13 strains of the bacteria that cause pneumococcal pneumonia. You should not receive Prevnar 13 if you have had a severe allergic reaction to the vaccine or its ingredients. If you have a weakened immune system, you may have a lower response to the vaccine. The most common side effects...